Hello, my name is Thomas Kramer Wolf. I'm product manager at PILS for the safety calculator Pascal. Today I'd like to present to you the library manager, so how to generate and uh, export libraries. This has been changed significantly coming along with the VDMA library format. Let's start with a new library generation. I click on the add library menu in the library view. It comes with create edit library as I got one library already pre-selected, all I need to do, I need to override the name, let's call it a uh, test library, and I need to assign the library file name. I call it test library as well. What is mandatory in this new outcome, uh, out, uh, in this new format, is the library format and the library version. The library version is in a three section uh, number scheme, major version, minor version and patch version. This allows you to uh, identify whether this version has been changed significantly or it's just an improvement. The last part is just patches, so if you have typos or something of a uh, minimal change. The middle one is if you have improvements and the first one if there are critical changes. You can point to file names with an icon file, so those are used for representation and you can point to an update address for it uh, in the HTTP format, so HTTP slash www.pills.com and you can even provide additional information uh, this is my library. If I did so, I could click OK and I've got already library defined but I can change to the devices right away and add devices and let's add one device just to start with. I click the add device. Right now I've got the four levels, the library name, the device name. If I click on it, I have the possibility to enter a device name. Let's call it my device. The identifier is the unique identifier which is used to um, identify the device and in our case we decided to automatically merge it from the part number and the version number. This is the recommended method by VDMA and so we are just implementing it so you don't need to uh, manually create this identifier. You see it's already reflected. The group of the device is uh, uh, allowing you to sort components of a similar uh, functionality into one pocket. So I could, let's say, uh, I have sensors or I have uh, valves or I have logic controllers in my portfolio. So I enter different groups. I can even name them by product families or s whatever I like. Again, I can point on icons. Maybe I browse on it and let's go to my prepare, prepared icon. I just selected the icon. This will be later on used to represent the device in the safety function. I could even add a document, a PDF to it, and I can add a de description. And as you might have learned in the earlier session, I can select the device as being archived, so just for historical reasons, if it's not intended for day-to-day -day use anymore. So the basic features of the device are all set. Let's go to the functionality. Here we have constraints not available. This is a keyword coming from VDMA uh, telling me there is no specific setting required. We implemented a selector to allow you uh, selecting the functionality of the device. In our case, let's come, come along with a uh, setting and as I selected here a sensor, I'm selecting here a sensor as well. Um, we have done a predefined list. This is possible to do it by yourself, but I selected it right now from the predefined list. As I selected sensor, it comes on along with the second level. I select, let's say, dual channel, and this might uh, be sufficient with, uh, no, escalating input, this was too much. So I can just select whatever I like in these lists. 
this gives me a rough indication of what this data set is good for. Um, I need to select as well the function. This is the logic block grouped into input, logic and output uh, with respect to 3849. And the naming might be a bit misleading. Input is actually a sensor. Logic is everything like digital inputs and digital outputs as well as the processing and output is actually the acting device uh, like an output relay. So I select input in this case. I'm asked about a category. I need to do a selection but I can select not applicable if I like or I select a category 3 if I know this device is meeting these requirements. You might wonder where are the real safety data. Um, this happens along the next tab and here I can select among the four basic fund fundamentally basic device types, the PL based, the MTTF based, B10D based or fault exclusion devices. For the PL SIL devices I can select either a, a PL and or a SIL. I don't need to select both so I can even go that way but it's preferred to have everything set. Um, the PFH, the common way, so there is no significant change to it and the mission time is just the same as well. If I have a different type, the MTTF, uh, I enter the values right here but what's new? I can not only select MTTFD but I can enter lambda D, MTTF without a D or MTBF so depending on the device type I have more freedom today. In the previous versions of Pascal we had RDF uh, but we called it differently. At that time it was lambda D by lambda so the ratio of dangerous failures and that's actually what that acronym stands for. It has been newly introduced in the VDMA uh, library format and we are just using it here as well. The mission time is well known. On the third option, the B10, B10D, we have again a new feature. We can select between B10 and B10D, not only the B10D. The two other parameters are just the same. And the fourth tab, the fault exclusion, is slightly different to what we know. You might imagine a fault exclusion device does not need any additional information because it's fault exclusion. But in reality, there may be uh, requirements coming from structural or systematic uh, reasons which are limiting a fault exclusion device to be used above a certain PL limit. So I can limit the PL even so it's fault excluded or the SIL even so it's fault excluded and I enter the mission time which means this device will not be part of the calculation but it may not be used above anything uh, like PLD or SIL2 in this case. So I have right now one device. I can add a new use case, a second one, which is maybe a, um, again a sensor, again the, the same settings, but maybe I use a single channel instead of a dual channel previously, and the category is maybe a ch category one. And um, I select the PLC, still one, and one, E minus nine because the performance le uh, the the PFH didn't change, so I've got two use cases to one device, and if I hit OK, I've got my library uh, defined. The component can be copied within the library, so you see I've selected a name uh, which was previously given and I can right now copy amongst those. I could um, copy this device, copy and paste uh, into the same library or I can remove it from the library, I can handle it there. Uh, you see I've got right now one manufacturer name and I've got a number of different libraries and those can be uh, handled there. I didn't have a look at, at one tricky thing, double clicking again on the library, I get the option to manage the constraints. 
we came along and said, okay, th those constraints, how to define a use case, are a bit tricky. So each section must be uh, made up in such a way that there is no overlapping. So we came up with a set of constraints uh, and we associated them with certain levels. So we associated the basic device type with the level one, the channels with the chan uh, uh, level two, and the input outputs with channel three. But if you like to have one uh, spe specific constraint to be added, all you need to do, you need to add a key. This is the internal representation. Um, my constraint and uh, I assign it uh, a name in a specific language my constraint en and I need to assign it to one of the levels as the warning indicates level 1 to 5 so let's put it on level 1 and I can click OK so it appears right here in in my list so I can handle uh, the, the constraints as I like and if I have specific needs I can adopt them but to stay clean I remove it again uh, and I've got my old list um, once the library is done I need to maybe share it with my colleagues or with customers so I go to the project export and go to library and have the option there to export it either in the VDMA format, which is the most complete data you can export. And I select my test lab and I need to select the library because you've seen I've got two libraries on the one name and uh, I can either select this or that one and I even can select which languages I like to export. I select all, I point on the directory um, where I'd like to um, present it and give it a new name test lib and OK and it's exported if I go to the directory right here I've got my test lib library exported which can be shared with my customers, with my colleagues this contains all the libraries and all uh, uh, all the library data, the various languages, all the data set. Um, getting back to Pascal, I've got the option to export it not only as VDMA but as Systema. So I select the same library, testlib and the one I just selected. And you realize here I've have to select which parts of it I'd like to export. I like to export inputs or outputs and I like to export all languages. I like to export it editable or not. Again, I need to tell the system where to put it. Instead of browsing, um, I just type it. Uh, and if I click OK, there is finally one fundamental difference. You will realize I've got right now four libraries instead of one. One for each subset, so one for the inputs, one for the outputs, one in German, one in English. This is because uh, some of the Systema libraries will otherwise be terribly slow in loading within Systema and uh, we like to overcome this limitation by splitting it in different libraries. Um, that's it so far. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day. Bye-bye.